Welcome back here to Hartford Connecticut Regionals Championships. I'm your host, Jeffrey Saran Rap Saran. And to my right, Kirk Dube Snacks Dubay. I want to take a quick chance to do a shout out here to our sponsors, Full Grip Games. If you purchase any Pokemon singles on their website this weekend, uh, use the Pokemon code LGN10 for 10% off all Pokemon singles for this weekend. Last round. Able to get two matches in. Two matches in. On Felt the good. stream. Felt good. Great job, casters, handling both different matches. Able to hop in there. Uh, Love the last match there. Hitting the Guzma, Lele, KO on the bench on the Ho-Oh. Yeah, that was Interns. Nice. That was nice. Fantastic. He did, he did a good job concealing his hand to even us. That's why uh, John and I were talking about, I like, hope he gets his or Trubbish down so yep. he can kind of make a maneuver. But he was uh, he was sandbagging uh, everybody at home, us in the booth, uh, and uh, his opponent Aaron himself, uh, that he had the Lele DCE to, to, to buckle that Ho-Oh for the right amount of damage. But – now, we've got what I like to call the Rocky Four of uh, expanded <laughs> matchups. We've got Ivan Drago and uh, Rocky Balboa going to be chucking hurting bombs at each other. We're going to have Picaram facing down Jose Marrero with Rayquaza GX. So it's Brian Hunter, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. going to be on Picaram. Jose Marrero, Rayquaza GX, and they're just going to be rip-roaring out of the gates and trying to just knock each other into submission for those six prize cards as fast as humanly possible. I love the Rocky uh, Four reference here. I want to say probably uh, <laughs> Ivan Drago is more than likely the peak around here. Going to be coming in strong, definitely the heavy favorite. Uh, not heavy favorite, larger volume hard-hitting favorite, but Rayquaza has some tricks of its own. It can last a long game, hand it all the way to the end, and if uh, peak around dries out, gets a little weak there. Rocky Balboa will come in with a nice haymaker for the game. Well, that's the thing. Uh, Pikaram hits hard, but also gives up three prizes. Uh, so if Jose can build up enough energy and take two big knockouts on those uh, Pikaroms, then uh, he only needs to take two to get all six prizes out of here. So, again, huge haymaker is going to be going back and forth. Uh, we haven't featured either of these players, but Brian Hunter has been uh, uh, leading the pace in the pack. All day yesterday was near the top tables. Uh, Matchups didn't necessarily shake out to get him out here, but – here we have just a slugfest, and Jose, of course, hasn't been on camera, but he's playing his old faithful, Rayquaza GX. I don't think I've done commentary in an expanded event where he hasn't shown up with this deck. He has shown up not only an expanded, but also a favor of that in the standard as well, piloting Rayquaza Vikavolt to multiple top finishes here throughout North America and in different international events, respectively. Um, definitely loves Rayquaza deck and favorite for favorite for uh, Team ARG. Yeah, um, he has been putting in a lot of positive results for that group. I'm going to look over at John real quick. Do they have their headsets on? No headsets on, so we're going to wait off uh, talking about the list. Uh, but Jose, sticking to what he knows best. Um, he does have a couple key inclusions here um, that I don't know how relevant they will come through in this matchup. However, uh, has a pretty uh, teched out situation uh, that we'll jump into here in a moment. Brian's list, how is that looking in terms of uh, convention here? Uh, definitely, you know, a little bit different here. We see the inclusion of Jolteon GX in this list as well uh, for him. It's a little bit different than what we've seen in traditional Picarama list uh, so far, what we stream. Not many Jolteon GX there. We also do not see the Jolteon EX here, which could honestly combat really well with all the bases on Jose's side there. Um, but, you're, but looking at the nature of this list right here, very straightforward. Zaya Aura, Zerker Tree GX. Um, lots of elixirs, lots of electro plowers. So um, definitely a lot of cards here to really accelerate the matchup for Brian. We're going to see if we can get them to put their headsets on here. And uh, we'll, we'll, well, what we can do to real quick, too, we can talk about some of the tables that are uh, still going on right now. At the top tables, Justin Coolis at 10-1-1, already at 31 points. Um, one more win here should safely would safely put him in for top eight there. Going against against uh, Sam Ertman. Uh, shot clock right now, 10-2, going against Connor Fitton, who we previously featured today. Uh, fun note on that one there, Connor did play against the shot clock this uh, week, uh, day one. And one against Shot Clock, they're playing Archie Stories. So, um, interesting uh, match there as well to see how that pans out. Yeah, uh, uh, Croxton been another person that's been uh, been leading the, the pack there. So, um, excuse me, a, a little uh, a little confusion here in the booth. I apologize for the delay there. Um, Croxton has been leading the pack. Uh, I do believe uh, top eighted. Daytona, correct? Was yes. See the shot clock. Yes, shot clock. Yep. So um, sticking with uh, sticking with the old guns coming through, and it's paying dividends. Uh, the experience with the deck uh, really uh, bringing fruit to bear here. And one other thing I want to mention here is uh, birthday delayed birthday boy Isaiah Williams now is at table four at 28 points, doing heavily well right now. All right, we're throwing these out because they're useless. We switched up games. Let's talk about the new one. We've got Justin Bakari 
Kowalski <laughs> and Ryan Antonucci. Um, let's take a look. We've got Wabafet, uh, Wabafet, Hitmonchan on one side, and Pikachu Zekrom on the other. Um, and that's what we've got going. So um, all the stuff we just talked about, hold on to it. Might be might be useful <laughs> later, but as of right now, throw it to the wind. Um, as I'm looking here, it looks like uh, Ryan Antonucci is going to be on the left-hand side of your screen. He's playing Pikachu Zekrom. Um, Got to hope that he can leverage uh, <laughs> leverage some big knockouts early and keep the Wobbuffet from coming through. Does he have weakness policy or anything like he that? does have flash energy. Flash energy would be big here. Um, and I do not just only plays the one enhanced hammer and no Faba. So flash energy can be key here to, to resist that weakness, as well as he can take multiple knockouts with uh, Tag Bolt GX. We'll see if that pans out here going down to the action now. Uh, Ryan Antonucci on your left, Justin Bakari on your right. DNC is down on the bench. Wobbuffet in the active exactly where he wants it. Floatstone, Shrine of Punishment is going to start ticking away some damage on that Shaman. And uh, Shaman, even though fighting resistant, uh, just doesn't need that many pieces to take a two-prize knockout on it. Absolutely not. They're going right away after that, that Antsy here. Going to get that extra damage output from Hitmonchan. And I'm sure Justin's well aware of what he's playing against as well. You know, like you said before, um, Pokestats does uh, keep track of all those day two uh, decks that have made it here. And what they are playing here, and knowing where Ryan's playing Pikaram, he's going right after the strategy here, getting that extra damage from the Princess's Cheer, Diancy. Ultra Ball on Ryan's side of the board, Super Rod, and I can't quite tell what that backup card is. However, Karen, Karen going to the discard. We have Pikachu Zekrom jumping into play. Uh, already a Shrine of Punishment tick on that Shaman, uh, leaving with just a measly 100 HP left. And um, Max Elixir to start off, and that is Ooh. a whiff. And that is not what Ryan wants to see, definitely. Flash Energy, crucial, crucial, crucial here in this matchup because of Picaram being fighting weak. And then Marshadow let loose to scramble everybody's hand back into their deck. Again, it's a judge. Uh, the judge supporter stapled onto a Pokemon. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. Big turn here right now for Ryan, potentially. Even though he has Wob in the active spot, does let loose could possibly not the best for him here. He needs to hit a Juniper or Sycamore uh, to draw some additional cards here uh, to accelerate the strategy right now. He does have the retreat already set up on the Shaman, so he can get a turn one uh, full blitz if he does find another elixir. Um, but with only four cards here, it may be tough to get there with the Bide Barricade active. Would like to see uh, maybe a Thunder Mountain would be able to come through and start really uh, powering Ryan's side of the board up, especially because he has flash energy. doesn't have to concern himself with too many heavy knockouts. Uh, but just a pass for Ryan. Didn't get much off the let loose. And now it's time to see what the let loose gave Justin. He's got five cards in hand at the start of his turn after the draw step and tapping his fingers on the table, which leads me to believe he's at least got decisions to be made. Definitely decisions here. Karina right there. One thing I like to note there is the Prism Energy on the Wobbuffet there. He can set up doing the, to do that Psychic Assault attack um, with Shrine ticking here, and it is going to add damage counters to each of these EX or GX Pokemon. Uh, psychic Assault doing 10 plus 10 more for each damage Pokemon on the defending, po uh, for on the defending Pokemon. Justin plays Karina, which will give him access to a fighting Pokemon of his choice from his deck, as well as an item card. Um, you mentioned before, sometimes you can Karina for Adventure Bag, which actually is kind of like uh, a Karina for three cards total. Uh, we'll see what the flavor of the day is here for Justin. He says it's Buzzwool, baby Buzzwool with the Sledgehammer and a Computer Search. Uh, Ace Spec's incredibly strong here in the expanded format, and because it is an item card, Karina can hop on the public library internet. Ch -ch 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 take a search with it, punch it in. Let's see what Justin wants out of his deck. Counter energy and uh, a card tucked right behind the computer search and a quick <laughs> quick grabbing of the card. It's not going to give us too much Probably information. Be Probably be the strong energy here or the tool to combat with the strong energy to take this KO on the Shaman after Shrine damage here. I don't know what the contents of his other hand is, but it is a strong energy right there on Q. Going to be able to hit for 30, 50 damage uh, after resistance. to 30. Oh, after resistance. Yeah, with Princess Cheer. Yep. And then a six to put it back to Shrine with the Shrine damage there. So three more ticks on that Shaman will KO it here. And unfortunately, Ryan does not run in double colorless energy. So Sky Return will be really hard to pull off here. Ryan taking a look. Uh, did draw for turn. Finds a Lightning Energy on the Picaram. This is an easy retreat. Uh, and that Flash Energy going to put in a, a lot of work. Justin does not have a way to knock that... Uh, knock that flash energy off to take advantage of the weakness. Uh, so that is just a bulky Pokemon sitting up front with 220 HP remaining. The big thing here that actually could pull off here, if Justin is not benching the Pokemon, Ryan can actually KO this Wobbuffet with the full Blitz. Then the following turn, if he loads up his own Picaram, um, 
Tag Bolt GX for the remaining two Pokemon for game. Uh, we do see here Cash is here to take away that Shaman back into the deck. And there we go. Trying to set up that love right there with the Tag Bolt GX. I, I like Ryan's play here. Cassius shuffle it in, and I'm also going to announce full blitz, so uh, I only have to shuffle up one time. Uh, Justin benches another Hitmonchan. Uh, enhanced, enhanced hammer, hammer the it, one count enhanced hammer he has it is and he has the counter energy to be able to pull off a magnum punch here 70 90 110 with diancy if he can find a muscle band a choice band here magnum punch can actually take the ko on this picaram i completely glanced over that enhanced hammer oh uh, shrine damage <laughs> shrine damage the shrine damage where did this come from justin bakari Huge. counter energy uh, Those are his one counts, too. The enhanced hammers are one count. <laughs> the counter is one count. This is all off the of let loose. <laughs> Sometimes you just got it. Sometimes you just, you just got it. And uh, Karina grabbed the computer search, which we know went and get, got the strong energy. So those, that's just the combination of cards he had in his hand. Insane, insane amount of, uh, you know, combination right there on Justin's side right now. No hand Sycamore for Ryan. Doing a quick energy count right now. Looks like it might be eyeing down to Coco Prism play to do Dance of the Ancients. Coco Prism Dance of the Ancients, uh, allowing to essentially, if it's on the bench, sacrifice itself to attach uh, a lightning energy to two Pokemon. To One no lightning to eat to two Pokemon. Two now as well with a the sacrifice there. It's not for a prize. It's just going to go to the loss zone as well. So no prize will be taken on just inside and sacrifice for that energy acceleration. Ryan completely caught off guard with that big turn from uh, Justin Bakari. So we could see a big turn here where he he could um, he needs another bench Pokemon to pull this off uh, this uh, this play here with Dance of the Ancient here because what he could do is Lost Zone with the Dance of the Ancients, attach to Energy and then he can actually use Coco GX to um, use that Arrow Trail ability to come in there. Big thing about Coco GX and all the other Tapu Pokemon that do not have weakness. That's a great point. Uh, Arrow Trail would have been able to scoop up the Lightning Energies uh, and Sky High Claws for 30 and do some damage. So hit and run, Guzma, pull up the Picaram. That is <laughs> a wow. choice man, wow. strong energy. Get 30, 50, here. 70, 90, 120. <laughs> he hit every piece right there. Well, the, the, oh, my. Yee. Let loose to four, played one Karina, and everything else was just off the prizes and off the top. Off the top, right there in his hands. I, I, I can only imagine that face reactions just as grabbing his car. It's kind of like, cool. <laughs> oh, oh, I just <laughs> got it again. It uh, kind of reminds me back. Um, what, DJ oh, Khaled, another one? <laughs> Uh, uh, Will Mantho, you remember when he got dismantled in the finals of that uh, yes. of the tournament in Madison, Madison last, last year, year, and it was just plucked off the prizes, the two perfect ones, and, uh, I guess, and then <laughs> and, and Will's like, is that really what just happened? Yeah, with the, with the Equal player right there, with the Beast God. Energy and the Choice Band, where you and I are just kind of like doing the math real quick. What? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so these, they're going to be shuffling up. Ryan's going to say, I don't know what that was, but uh, I don't want that to happen again. <laughs> and Justin's thinking, well, if I'm drawing that hot, let's it's, run it. It seems the flavor of day two on stream that if you get let loose and you're on the other side of it, it's you gonna win. It's going to be into gas. You it's going to be into gas. It's, it's, it's inevitable. So the strategy here is to get let loose by Justin. <laughs> <laughs> So Ryan's like, I really hope Justin goes with the decay. Is that even happen? That can't it even happen. It is hit Marshadow. I don't need to play a Ryan, Ryan, They have the same sleeves. Ryan just plucked the Marshadow into, <laughs> into Justin's deck. Let's go down to the action. Uh, Ryan's on the ones and twos. What's in the active here? Is that Zara Aura? That is Zara Aura. All right. And I think that's Nihilego on uh, Justin's side. One of the Ultra Beasts there uh, being able to copy an attack once it's down to two prizes. A lot of interesting cards on Justin's side of the board here. We do see or uh, on Justin's deck list here because trying to leverage that counter energy. This Hitmonchan Wob deck actually, now that I mentioned it, is mirrored to uh, the Hitmonchan Wob we had previously with the Decartana, the Kecleon, the Nihilego, all these different techs here um, for any kind of matchup as well. Even has the Shaman too. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they're both... They are both top cut players, uh, <laughs> which makes sense here. And they both are playing the same 60 is what it looks like. Energy onto the Picaram. Shaman going to set up for four. That trainer's mail coming through. I believe it picked up a Karen. That was thrown away immediately with the Ultra Ball. Uh, double Electro Power. 
Capo Coco Prism, Here we Marshall, go again. let loose. Here we go again. Is it going to happen? Is it going to stay consistent and true to what has been doing today? Is Justin going to get it all? Justin going to shuffle up, going to draw four. He's probably thinking, oh, if my luck goes anything like uh, like last game, I'll probably just play down Wabafet, Floatstone, Hitmonchan, Sycamore. Yeah, some some of those combinations. It well, doesn't matter. I think. One, two. Well, that was Juniper. Actually, that's exactly what just happened. Juniper. It is Juniper, Wab, <laughs> Dianci, Ultra Ball. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well, <laughs> computer search for uh, if, if, if Ryan gets, Antonucci. If you hit the flow stone, you off the Juniper off this top deck here. I might have to walk away from the headphones mm -hmm. for a quick second because, man. My, my mic would be on fire if that happened. <laughs> uh, computer search, grabbing a card, getting back into the action. Uh, good guy Ryan Antonucci showing that I'm going for a, a Sycamore off of that computer search. And let me draw seven. Let me get some Max Elixirs. Let me do something. Max Elixirs, some additional. And you already attached to turn Max, uh, Max Elixirs. Uh, don't want don't electric powers just yet. They don't actually won't even need those for this matchup as well. You could dump those as soon as you see them there. Uh, does hit the elixir this time. Um, just really just go off. Do what Pikachu Zekrom does. Fortunately, the Zero Aura is in the active, so uh, a lightning energy attachment to it. Is that another max elixir? I'd like to see it go down right now. He has an elixir and an energy to attach to Zero Aura the following turn as well. Um, he may be holding that elixir because next turn he could draw one additional card to increase his odds of hitting that energy uh, the following turn, unless he does top yeah, deck that energy. energy. Yep. Uh, so that could be what he's pondering now if he wants to go for it now or see if he could thin down just one more card before playing it there since he already has the energy for action. I like it. Beyblades let a rip. Play that max elixir down. He got him the very last card there, so <laughs> well, fortunate enough there. Three energy on the Pikachu Zekrom. Still, as you mentioned, still has the one in hand to use uh, Thunderclap Zone to retreat the Zero next turn. Uh, now Justin Bakari has four cards, and they're four good ones. Uh, off the top is going to be the Float Stone. He's going to attach that, and we're just going to keep going through uh, through the paces. That was not a Float Stone. C can't <laughs> get a perfect. Can't get a perfect. What you can do, you can also Ultra Ball away if you wanted to, to Wob and guarantee himself to hit Monchan with whatever other card he drew. Couldn't tell if it was something extremely no, valuable, sure. but he does have... Juniper in hand, so that ha that hand's going to the bin regardless. Uh, throwing one <laughs> card down, picking that one card right back up. I think he's deciding he wants the Ultra Ball away to Diancie or the Wobbuffet here, and he opts to do the Wobbuffet discarding what looks to be a Guzma, I think, looking yeah, at that background. Guzma came off the top, so Ultra Ball, uh, Ultra Ball for Wobbuffet out, get a Hitmonchan, that's, uh, that's my attacker. That's what the engine is uh, to get started first. Probably wants to get that uh, Nihilego out of the active and start uh, hitting in with, uh, Absolutely. with with his damage modifier. Hoping to get like Floatstone, Strong Energy, Choice Band. Shrine, choice band, all the stuff there. Kartana. Shrine, does he have? Oh, no energy, though. He, he did get, um, I believe it was Beast Energy was the energy he drew off of that. So got some of the pieces, not all. And I think uh, Zero or GX will live to see another deck. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to, with the Beast Energy, you can attach it to Nihil Lego and do Void Tentacles to uh, confuse and, I believe, poison the active Pokemon. Um, but opposite just pass. Let Shrine do his damage. Damage there, and it wasn't a dead, clearly dead turn. Shrine is going to um, slowly work down these EX and GX Pokemon. Might want to prefer uh, to save that Beast Energy for Baby Buzzwool, Sledgehammer for 150 with weakness 300. That's a clean knockout. So, um, Escape Rope, Justin promotes a Hitmon Chan. Uh, Ryan promotes his uh, Pikachu Zekrom. Doesn't have to uh, waste the attachment onto uh, Zero Aura just yet. Is able to preserve that lightning uh, and maybe put it somewhere where it'll have a little bit more use. He yeah, could be looking maybe to figure out a way to Ultra Ball into the discard pile. It's only one lightning energy in the discard right now. So another opportunity to do Dance of the Ancients uh, later on, which he's just going to do to one card now. Attach the Pikaram. He has another energy he can still attach here. He may attach to the active Pokemon. The reason being here, uh, okay. <laughs> Pikachu Zekrom, don't P even need to Theory Mon it. And we're going to come in. And Arrow Trail with Tapu Koko GX. And as you mentioned, because it is a Tapu, it does not have any weakness. And uh, Sky High Claws is just good enough. It hits for a clean 130, mm -hmm. no other text to it. However, everything in Justin's deck is just smaller than 130 or smaller. Yeah, big here with not hitting that weakness right now. It's going to take a couple punches from Hitmonchan to weaken up this uh, spirit Pokemon on Ryan's side. Going into Justin's turn, now he hits the strong energy. 
Justin really wanted the strong energy last turn uh, to be able to deal some uh, some good damage onto Zero Aura GX. However, uh, just a hit and run for 70 damage onto the Tapu Koko. It's sitting at 90. It has 170 HP. So Justin's going to need another damage modifier. Uh, Shrine Ticks will help. Shrine yeah, Shrine Ticks, ticks going back into Ryan's turn will actually KO this Coco if uh, Ryan decides to KO this Nihilego. I'd venture to say he does um, as he's starting to set back up the Pikaram on bench. It uh, looks like he's just not going to give a chance with the Shrine damage to knock out the Coco and Zero just go right GX, in. Thunderclap zone yep. allowing us to retreat there uh, without having to expend uh, any energy to the retreat cost. And that is a knockout. And um, three energies coming out of Ryan's deck if he chooses. And he says, I choose. Three energy. Let's see where they go. Knocking out the Nihileo here. Going up to Pikaram number two. With the full book stack. tick. Good guy, Chris Shemansky, with those long noodle arms coming through, <laughs> helping him flip over those uh, those damage counters. And now the onus is on Justin doing some math. Last time he did this, it was for three prizes when he started tapping the table with his fingers. There he goes. He's calculating away. He, big calculator going through. Quick math to see if he can take a KO on this peak of ROM here. What now he needs to hit is 200 <laughs> Counter damage. Counter energy choice band versus seeker for Juniper. Let's go. <laughs> well, that Magnum Punch is going to knock out the speaker rum. And Ryan's, Ryan's just see he's just having the worst case of deja vu oh. here, like again. Kecleon comes down right next to Hit Mon Lee. Floatstone on the Deancey has something to pivot to. I wonder if he can he knock out with hit and run here. 30, 50, 70, choice span 100. Yeah, hit and run can actually knock out here. So if you want to set up uh, the Hitmon leave attack next turn, he could do that as well. So 30, 50, 80. And the strong energy too, right? Was that a strong energy? It was strong energy, energy choice span plus Diancy. Perfect. That's got to feel good. Hit and run <laughs> for a knockout. That Shrine has just been out on the field too long. And Ryan does play two stadium cards of his own, just hasn't come across them. Um, not at the key times. And this Shrine tick has literally been from Justin's first turn and has just been slowly building over and over and over again. And now an Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele for an N. And uh, Ryan is going to N Justin here down to two. Or excuse me, down to three. Down to three here um, after the knockouts there. Uh, it's going to be interesting turn of events here for Ryan. If this end can really slow down Justin, um, we could see a, com a comeback here for Ryan. T-Mail. Not looking at too much there. See a Verseeker and Guzma. Now Ryan did find a Guzma off of his trainer's mail. So even though he took the N, uh, elects to go with the Max Elixir. and might put pressure on this Hitmonchan and hope that Justin can't cobble together a good response. Uh, because he drew the Guzma, he, he, he Tampu lele for the end. However, he yes. never played it. He, he was just making yep. sure he saw all his options and that, finding that Guzma. Um, or excuse me, he grabbed Max Elixir off of that. Yeah, he grabbed Max Elixir, already played it with the Max Elixir. Plays another team mail, is grabbing Ultra Ball is what it looks like. So no Guzma. However, we, do, we are going to probably see an attachment and N uh, to get Justin down to three prizes or three cards in hand. Quick shuffle. Quick shuffle from Ryan here. Yeah, uh, Ryan's in a uh, you know interesting spot right now. I, you know, I kind of you know want to go to what you were mentioning there, where we could have probably grabbed the Guzma and took the KO on the Hitmonchan. Um, you know, that's probably one of the bigger threats right now. Hitmon lead would have been able to do 90 damage, but it's only 90 damage to a bench Pokemon, and you're not applying any weakness or resistance when you do that attack there. So. Um, it might have been a good point there to take out his only real threat to his board. Yes, Shrine is there. You want to bump that Shrine, but you could have survived another turn, one or two turns before him on chain comes back into play. Electra Power being played down. Ryan still trying to navigate uh, the waters here. Silent Lab bumping the stadium. So Shrine Ticks will stop for now. However, Justin does play more than one copy of uh, Shrine of Punishment. 
So if Justin finds another one, that's an easy uh, easy play. There's a big counter play here on Ryan's side right now, being able to end low car into a low hand, also bumping the stadium. So uh, and leaving Coco in the active spot now, or even um, well, Silent Lab shutting it off there. Hitmonchan can still take the KO on this Coco to bring Justin down to one prize left. Uh, because there is 110 damage on there, and Hitman Chan is going to be hitting for 30, 50, 80. 30 is the, or excuse me, 80 is the right number uh, to get a knockout. However, it does insulate uh, and make Justin go down to one card, and uh, you know Ryan can take a knockout, follow up knockout, and try and end again. It could be always eyeing down here. I mean, if you look at it with the, with the Pikachu, Pikachu Zekker right now with the four energy. Um, Similar to what we were talking about last time, he could be lining up a chance to take the initial KO and then two prizes the following turn with Tag Bolt GX here. But end to one and pray is what we could be seeing from Ryan's side. Uh, Juniper discarding a hand, Nest Ball uh, off of the Juniper, going to be played and just going to find another threat, I presume, here uh, to be able to insulate uh, himself a little bit from you know, a fully powered Tag Bolt GX from just wiping his entire board from all his attackers. Um, Deancey sitting up front, definitely not going to be Ryan's priority. Justin looking through his deck for this Nest Ball, allowing him to grab a Pokemon from his deck, put it directly onto his bench. A basic Pokemon, that is, obviously. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to be eyeing down right now. He could look at Wobbuffet here, um, but, I mean, at this point, ability locking down is not necessary because Silent Lab is in play. But it is another pivot Pokemon that he can go into if Silent Lab were to be bumped by Shrine and slow down Ryan Slav aside from the uh, ultimately Thunderclap zone to not to be able to pull off that free retreat. We are going to see a KO here. It looks like he might be eyeing down the Shaman, actually, with the special combo after this hit and run here with the Hitmonlee. Hit and run, goes into Wobbuffet, takes a prize, two left for Justin. And, oh, uh, this is huge, yes. So Justin so needs a way to get rid of that. Ryan needs a way to get rid of that Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee is going to be a danger, but look, he needs to he needs to Guzma the Hitmonlee and be able to uh, do a Tag Bolt GX and take away the Hitmonchan and the Hitmonlee. This is actually, I think, game because this is like a this is literally a checkmate point where if he even Guzma ups the Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan could come up and KO whatever he brings up in either either situation there. I Brian, think Brian just sycamored, my friend, so that's off the table. And uh, I don't think, I think this <laughs> is, Brian I, has an out here. I think this is There's the, too many good attackers on Justin's side of the board. He played this, as you mentioned, to a checkmate scenario. And there's just not enough energy that can be put on board. Max Elixir, Ryan's going to go through the paces and see, well, let's see what this turns up. And there extends the hand too easy for Justin Bakari. Justin Bakari there. Uh, first time, it kind of feels like in a long time, we've seen a fighting deck actually be able to take take advantage of the weakness on the other side of the board. Um, I missed, I glanced over that one copy of Enhanced Hammer for game one, and Justin just found everything off that let loose. Enhanced Hammer, knock that off, counter energy, yep. choice ban, big knockout on the Pikachu Zekrom from uh, the little punchy Pokemon and was able to sweep that game fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, that game one was insane for Justin's side there as far as the draws are concerned and what prize he grabbed off after those knockouts there, like you said before, the counter energy, the enhanced hammer to, to take off that weakness and the flash energy and so many different plays that happened there that were honestly from just insane draws. It was off a of let loose there, and sometimes when you're on that side of luck, uh, you could take full advantage of it. Then here in game two, uh, checkmate it was between putting that energy instantly on the Hitmon Lee to set up that knockout for off the hit and run with a special combo attack to KO the Shaman on bench, and also setting up a KO with the enhanced hammer, uh, sorry, strong energy and choice spin on the Hitmon Chan. So, uh, that's a scenario where I don't think Ryan can win that there, but he's still in a good spot here with the last going into the last round to hopefully make top eight. Yep, and we've got a winner's interview here with Justin Bakari. Your winner of round uh, 12? Is that where we're at? 13. 13. Round 13. Justin Bakari, round 13 winner. We'll see you here back in a second.
Welcome back, everybody. Kirk here alongside your round 13 winner, Justin Bakari. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Got to be feeling pretty <clears throat> good. Have a decent record. You're at table five and yep. slowly making the climb. So, yep. uh, Hitman Chan Wab, what led you to that deck? Uh, honestly, I had no idea what to play. I thought there'd be a bunch of Pika, and I said I'd have a decent matchup if I play Hitman, so I just went with it, and I said if I hit the right matchups, then, uh, yeah, we, we can get to this point. All right. Well, you're at this point. You clearly yeah. have been hitting the yeah. right matchups. Uh, walk us through that let loose into the enhanced hammer counter energy, just oh, insane yeah, yeah. turn. Okay, so when you let loose me and you were setting up the Pika, I was like, okay, so if I can just set up my hand where – I didn't expect a double flash energy on it. So he had the one flash. So I said, okay, if I just hold this hand, I expect him to full blitz me so I can just go magnum punch and just wipe his board. And that's exactly how it played out. So I just wanted to set my hand up for when he did that, I could just magnum punch. God, that was yeah. disgusting. He let loose. I think the first thing you played was a Karina. Yeah, and like I, I had a Juniper and a Karina, but I was like, okay, I expect the full blitz so I can Karina to set up my hand for the magnum punch, which is exactly what happened. Yeah. That was so good. That was so good. And game two, uh, you really just put the pedal to the metal and let him kind of uh, leashed him along into uh, uh, what we were calling in the booth a checkmate scenario between yeah, him only and hit oh, yeah. so uh, explain to us uh, that little setup here how you're playing to the long game on that okay so there was a point in the mid game where I got dicey because I had a bad hand but uh, once I top deck the juniper I was able to juniper and kind of set myself up so like you were describing the hitman Lee the checkmate because he had he couldn't play Cassius because I knew he played Cassius and also knock out the bench hitman uh, Chan so I was like, okay, so if he can't do that, the Hitman Lee will win on Shaman or the Chan will win on Pika, which is basically what happened. That was uh, yeah. uh, very excellent to watch, watch yeah, you go you. through the thank paces. Uh, it seems like you're incredibly confident in your deck. Hitting, uh, let's, yeah, let's I hit, guess. Let's I guess. hit some right matchups. No uh, Trevenant, no Trevenant. You, you got one more round. We know what you don't want to play, which is Trevenant. Yeah. What would you like to see out of what has uh, been uh, running around the top tables? Zoro or Pika or Ray too. Ray is okay. All right, Zora, Pika, or Ray. Yep, yep. Justin Bakari, round 13 winner. Going to see if he can run it yep. back in round, uh, or excuse more. me, round thir 13. I'm getting all confused. Yeah, well, round, round 13, round 13. Round 13 good, winner. Let's see if he can run it back around 14. We'll all catch right. you in the top eight, all, all right? right Thanks no for joining try. us. Congratulations, no and we'll be back. Round 14 action. Finally got it right.